Designs. Today is another thrift flip video where I take items I've thrifted and upcycle them for resale. Now, if you have watched my videos for any length of time, you know that I love spindles. They just add so much character and charm to any piece that they're added to. And I will put links in the description below to all the videos that I've used spindles on because today we're going to do something a little bit different with spindles. Now, one of my customers gave me this thing. Look at this beauty. So pretty. So the plan is to add this to a sign just to add, like I said, so much character and charm to the piece. I don't know what it's going to say yet. I don't know how big it's going to be. I still got to work out all the details. But when I saw this, I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it. I don't know where it comes from. Like it's already cut in half. I have no clue. But I always pick up stuff like this and I will figure it out later on. Come across a good spindle, you need to pick it up. And then a while back, I thrifted these little taco, uh, they're called Perfect Tortilla. Look, it's still got the stuff, the papers in it. It came with a set of four, but okay. <laughs> I'm going to put these on some spindles to make some cute little like candlesticks or risers or tiered elevated thingamajiggies, like whatever you want them to be. I know it's hard to see right now. I haven't picked out the spindles that I'm going to use yet, but y'all, it's going to be so farmhouse cute. I can't wait for y'all to see it. So let's go ahead and get started on these projects. The first part of every project is planning. So I have my pieces laid out. First thing I do is figure out how long I want my board to be. I use fence boarding and they're five and a half inches wide and I can make them however long I want them to be. This particular sign, I want the boards to be three feet long and then I take my measurements and go on the computer, pick out a quote and then I print it out to the exact size that I need. So I'm gonna need four fence boards, three feet long to do this piece. I've already cut my fencing down using my miter saw and now I'm gonna attach the boards using this plywood, my glue bot, and I use Gorilla Glue Wood Glue. All of these are linked in my Amazon store. What I do is I cut down half inch plywood. Um, I'll just make a bunch of strips of these. That way I have them ready to go whenever I need to put signs together. They're not too thick so your um, sign doesn't stick out too much, but they're thick enough to really hold your boards together. Now I'm gonna use my brad nailer to nail everything together. Your nail gun will tell you what size nails fit in it and you just wanna make sure you're using the correct size nail for each project. You do not want your nail to go through onto the other side. They should just be long enough to hold everything together but not go through both pieces and then glue your, I mean, <laughs> nail your board to your work surface. I've sanded down my sign and now it's ready to be painted. I'm using antique white flat paint from Walmart. It's about $13 a gallon and I use this for all my wood signs because it distresses fine using this paint and it's cheap. Now, if you wanted your sign to be very rustic, I would recommend not sanding it until after you paint it and a lot more paint will come up. I don't like my signs, super rustic. I like it pretty much just hit kind of the edges and the corners and that's about as much as I like my signs distress, but you know, it just depends what style you're going for. So I definitely wanted to give y'all that tip to wait till after the sand down your board and you will get a lot more of the natural wood coming through that way. And since I don't like my signs that rustic, I like to put a nice thick coat of paint on, that way it kind of fills in all the holes and some of the roughness and makes the sign much more smooth. So also if you want it to be more rustic, you could put um, a much thinner layer of paint than what I'm doing. When I'm doing custom work, I always am constantly putting the piece back together just to see if it's coming together like I wanted it to. And I ended up changing two things. So 
You see how this piece is across here and it makes this board look shorter? I ended up cutting the bottom board to see, be about the same height just because spacing is really important to me and I wanna make sure it doesn't look off. And then I ended up making the words bigger as well because I thought they just looked too small on the piece. So now I have my words bigger and there isn't as many gaps in space. Like I like the spacing on this much better. Now I'm gonna use my bride nailer and I'm gonna put two bride nails in just because it'll be easier to make sure this is level doing it from this side. And then I'm gonna turn it over and secure it into place with a lot more bride nails. Then I can bring it inside and just sit and relax and start painting the words on. All of my designs start off on the computer, then they're printed onto paper, and then I'll tape the pieces of paper together if I need to, and then I transfer it onto the wood. I'm using painter's tape to hold my template into place. Um, this will not pull up your paint. I would not suggest using transparent tape because it will pull up your paint that's on the sign. And then I take a pencil and carbon paper and that will transfer the template onto my wood. Now I use a professional design program so I can make my page the same size as my piece of wood and figure out exactly how I want it to look. I use Adobe InDesign, but I have no doubt there are plenty of free programs and apps that would allow you to do the same thing. This is just the program that I've used in college and throughout my graphic design career. So I am just very comfortable with it. And once you peel it off, then you have a template that I can take my Sharpie painter's pen and just go back over the letters that I just traced. Now this is like, it's a bit of a process, but I've been doing this for so many years. It's just very easy to me. It's relaxing. I usually put on one of my favorite shows or YouTube or whatever and sit and do this while work. It really doesn't take me that long, it used to, but like everything else, the more you do it, the better you get at it. I like the Sharpie painter's pen. You see the blue line? That's the water-based one. So it gives you a very matte look. When I use, when I do outdoor signs, I use the oil base that has like a little bit more of a shine, but it holds up better outdoors. I have all of the items and products and tools that I use in my Amazon store, and the link is in the description below if you want to check out that and see all the products that I use. And if you have any questions about it, you can always comment on this video and I will do my best to answer your questions. To hang the sign, what I wanna do is, I wanna wrap some twine around the edges of the spindle and create a hanger. Now, when you see the finished product, the string that I ended up using, I think is too small, but it's all that I had. So I'm definitely going to be going to the store and getting some thicker string for this project, but I wanted it to kinda of look like a hanging tapestry. And this is gonna be a beautiful, one of a kind piece that's gonna go in one of my customers' houses. And I just think that's so fun that nobody else will ever have one like this. I always get asked who inspires me. And my answer is always, there's not a person that inspires me. The things that I find inspire me because had I not had this spindle, this sign would have never happened. When I saw the spindle, I got the idea, I created the piece, and I, I just love it. Y'all leave a comment below and let me know what y'all think about this piece.
So we are in the planning stage of this project. Do y'all remember these amazing spindles I got on my thrift haul a few weeks ago where I paid a dollar a piece for all of them? Um, I'm thinking these are going to be great just sitting on top of here and I just want different heights. So I'm going to cut them down, make sure everything's level for them. But I don't want to change this color. So I'm hoping if I paint this white, the whole piece will look great together. So we're going to go ahead and get started and just see how this project evolves. Some of these spindles do have nails sticking out of them. I have this nail puller in my Amazon store. It is the most amazing tool to have in your shop. I highly recommend it. You just take it and clamp it down to your nail and then you just kind of pull it down and it just comes out. It's amazing. So I use it with my bride nailer if I get a wonky nail, but it also helps pull in old nails out. Using my miter saw, I'm going to cut both sides of the spindles. That way I know each side is level. And I also want all the spindles to be different sizes. So I'm just going to cut it where I think it should be just to have these all at different heights. I do want to sell the set together and I just think it looks so cute when you have a little collection of things. But they're all at different heights. I want to maintain as much as the character of, as possible on these spindles. So I don't want to sand them down. I'm just using a brush to clean them up. And then I'm going to take my blower and just blow anything that's on there off. And then I'm going to use Minwax Polyacrylic in a matte finish. It is a water-based sealer. And it is the best thing that I found to maintain the color of a piece. It has a nice matte finish and it'll slightly darken the wood as you can see, but it doesn't turn it yellow. So I'm going to put two coats of this on and that'll seal in all this paint or anything that might want to chip off this piece. It'll keep that from happening. Now, if you don't have the Minwax Polyacrylic, I have used Mod Podge before and that also works. Just make sure you're using a matte finish. Um, definitely best for a farmhouse look instead of something with a high gloss. To paint the top pieces, I'm going to use my spray gun. I purchased this from Harbor Freight and it is filled with Rust-Oleum white chalk paint. I really want to get a zero gravity paint sprayer, but this one just won't die. So I haven't purchased a new one yet. So you can actually see the paint is kind of beating up. This doesn't happen often, but when it does, you can spray Rust-Oleum clear coat on it and that'll help the paint to bond to the piece. You could also just use Rust-Oleum spray paint in the color that you want, but that's not an option for me today because I don't have the color that I want and I'm not going to the store. So I'm going to spray the clear mat on and then I'm going to go back with my sprayer and spray again and it should go on perfectly. So once it has a coat of the Rust-Oleum on it, the paint is going on much better. I could have swore I had four of these things, but I can't seem to find a fourth one. Maybe I just had three. Maybe I'm losing my mind. These di did take a while to paint just with all the curviness in this piece. It took a while. It might have actually been faster to paint these by hand, but I just love the smooth finish that the paint sprayer gives. So... I just stuck with it and painted them with my paint sprayer. I knew I had four of these. I just found one. Like I'm almost finished with the other ones. And this one's just been sitting right here. And I never noticed that I was looking at these spindles to use. So uh, now I've got to get this one painted with the other ones. Once everything's dry, I just want to lightly distress just the tops of these pieces. So I'm just using a low grit sandpaper and I'm just going to hit it along the edges just to very lightly distress this piece. Now I have to be honest, I was not crazy about how this 
came out the pieces together but sometimes I don't like stuff but other people love it so I could have kept messing with it but I was like you know what let me just leave it be and you never know somebody else might love it well actually a customer stopped by this morning to pick up some other stuff and she already purchased them like she absolutely loved them so if you are uncertain about a piece sometimes you just got to leave it and then if it doesn't sell, then you can spend your time trying to make it better. But I am very interested to know what y'all think about this. Did y'all like the way it came out or not? I am using Gorilla Clear Grip Adhesive. Sorry, that is upside down right there. I love this stuff. It does not smell, but you do need to let it dry for 24 hours. So once you put it on your piece, make sure you have the time to let it completely dry and when i'm doing stuff like this i like to do it upside down because i find it's easier to find the middle of a round surface when you do it upside down Hope y'all enjoyed today's video please leave a comment below and let me know what was your favorite project that i worked on today if you love these sorts of videos make sure you subscribe to my channel i do lots of thrift flips lots of diy and lots of thrift store shopping that's the fun part right y'all have a wonderful day and i will see y'all on the next video thanks for watching and give this video a big